All right, so we're going to continue the story quest line with Nilu for the Summertide Scales and Tales event. So apparently there's three locations on the map that we need to go help out the residents of the Forest of Blessings. So... That one seems to be up a cliff. Let's do that one last. Or not last. Let's do that one second so then I can glide over to there, I guess? Question mark? Let's see. Yeah, I'll go to this one first, because it's easier to get to. Oh, I'll worry about that later. Oh, froggies! Oh, stream! Your rhythm is off again! At this rate, it doesn't even matter if the tavern reopens. <laughs> the band's not even going to get any gigs! <sighs> I'm sorry. Uh, hello there. I hope we aren't interrupting your rehearsal. Wait, these are the two frogs we saw on the road a little while ago. Ah, oh, the forest fairy is here! For the love of lotus leaves and dewdrop stream, you've really got to put in some effort now. But I... Oh, don't pressure yourselves on my account. Are you rehearsing for a show? Sure are. You see, our group regularly performs for guests at the tavern. We've been out of work for quite some time, with the closure and all, but after hearing of the fairy's arrival yesterday, we figured we needed to get in performance shape right away. <laughs> I understand how you feel. Back at the Grand Bazaar, Zubair Theater's always busy with rehearsals, too. The Grand Bazaar? Do people there sing on lotus leaves as well? Yeah, they do. And it's a really big one. You're the conductor of your group, aren't you? You remind me of Mr. Zubair. Ah, then he must be an ambitious director. One who would do anything to avoid disappointing a single member of the audience. It's just... Hmm. Is there anything we can do to help you, Mr. Stream? Oh, no, no. My problems are mine and mine alone. It's just... After the tavern closed, I somehow forgot how to sing. I'm always a few beats behind everyone else, and I keep singing out of key. You were our trump card, our best singer by a mile. I know, I know, but... <sighs> so he is a victim of the fading disorder too? Don't be sad, Mr. Stream. Whenever I've forgotten important dance steps in the past, my friends at the Grand Bazaar always stick by my side to encourage me. They smile and patiently tell me everything's going to be okay. Then, they play the melody for me over and over, until the steps finally come back to me. Now, it's our turn to help you. We just need to help you remember how to sing, right? The Traveler's got a great sense of rhythm. We can help keep you in time. Well, what do you say, Stream? I think it's a great idea. Just focus on the lyrics, and the fairy's friends will help you stay on beat. Are... are you sure? This is really asking a lot. Don't worry about it, Mr. Stream. It'll all be worth it when the tavern reopens, and we finally have the chance to hear your marvelous singing voice. All right, then. Thank you so much, everyone. I I'll give it my best shot. The Paper Frog Choir will perform sequentially according to the rhythm. Direct the rightmost froggy to jump at just the right moment. There may be song and dance accompanying the performance. Remember to follow the accompanying rhythm too. Begin! Excellent! Perfectly in time!
I messed up a little bit, but hey, I still get chest for it. I feel like I'm getting the hang of it again. Goddess is above. This better stick when it comes to the performance. Just do it exactly like how we rehearsed. Thank you, everyone. Thanks to you, my voice is once again as clear as a flowing stream. Glad to hear that you're feeling better, Mr. Stream. It's also about time for us to go to our next destination. Mm-hmm. We'll be looking forward to your performance at the tavern. Traveler, Paimon, we should make our way to the next location. Glide right down to it. Oh, wait. I didn't grab... I'll get it next time. I didn't grab the waypoint. That was silly of me. Oh, my dear Citrus. Please tell me you're joking. We can't have you out of commission with the tavern about to reopen. I'm sorry, Grandpa Almond. It's the truth. I was just too excited for the reopening and must have fallen asleep in an awkward position. Grandpa Almond! We're here to help! Oh, hazelnuts on high. You could not have come at a better time. Uh, please allow me to introduce you. This is the bartender of the Calligraphy Tavern, Miss Citrus. She's so tall. Uh, Miss Citrus is supposed to add all kinds of delicious fruits to the magic tonic. Her additions are what turn it into the finest brew in the land. <laughs> She's indispensable to the operation of the tavern. I appreciate the kind words, Grandpa Almond, but... Uh, my neck. Are you all right? Ah, uh, terrible timing. Getting a kink in my neck at a time like this? Could you give my tail a little twist? That should help free up the movement in my neck. I would do it myself, but I can't reach my own, and Grandpa Almond is too old and as light as a feather. The neck and tail are connected? Of course they're connected. Just like how you can't have a rainbow without rain. <clears throat> anyway, you just need to position me at the right height to pick the fruits, and then put them in the barrel over there. Okay, let's give this a try. Press, in, press the interact button to pull the magic threads on the paper alpacas back and help her. While connected, you can move it to adjust the neck height of the paper and alpaca, the paper alpaca in the direction she is facing. Did I call it an alpaca or a llama last time? Oh well. While connected, press the attack button at the correct position, position so the paper alpaca may obtain the needed mixology materials. Oh, this button. There we go. Hmm. This doesn't seem quite right. There we go. I was doing it at an odd angle, so... Perfect! My neck feels much better. So there really is some kind of connection between your neck and tail. Thank you so much, everyone. I can rest easy now, knowing the drinks at the tavern will be just as wonderful as before. That's another problem solved! Traveler, Paimon, we should make our way to the next location. Just kidding. Here, 
And she brought her companions. Grandpa Almond was right. They do look promising. Hello there, everyone. I heard you were working on the piping for the calligraphy tavern. Is there anything we can do to help? Oh, we wouldn't dream of troubling you with our petty problems, my lady. Don't you worry. We have it all under control. Aye, you sure about that? Because from where Paimon's floating, the piping is looking pretty chaotic. Ah, yes. We have my careless friend to thank for that. He promised we could leave the pipe connecting to him, and... Well, the results speak for themselves. Uh, hey, I just wanted to inspect each pipe. This is the network the magic tonic has to flow through. I was just trying to be thorough, so I... <laughs> I disassembled the whole thing. Yeah, and now you've forgotten how to put the thing back together. <sighs> have you been eating too many nuts again? Because you are what you eat. Please don't fight. I know everyone wants the tavern to reopen as soon as possible so that the force can return to normal. So, why don't you let us help out? Yeah, we're here anyway, so we might as well be helpful. We just need to reassemble these pipes, right? Well, if you're offering... Basically, the pipes need to be connected properly to allow the magic tonic to flow through. If you put the wrong pipe in the wrong place, the tonic will get stuck halfway. Attention to detail is key. Says the guy who messed up the whole thing in the first place. All right. So obviously these need to be rotated. And then, okay, so it looks like I'm going to have to ro rotate this one after it passes through so I can get it to come into the cup. You did it! Now the tonic will flow into everyone's cups without getting stuck, right? Oh, gotta say, though, Paimon is starting to get pretty curious about this magic tonic. Um, could she have a teeny tiny sip? Just a little taste, please? Paimon, stop being greedy. It's not greed, it's curiosity. Well, if it's really just one sip, I guess that would be fine. Just be careful. This is one of the last cups left in the entire forest. We're supposed to save it for our research. Just a sip. Promise. Okay, here it goes. What was that? Oh, I'm still kicking the Paimon's pen. Uh, wait, is this just regular ink? Ink and paper. Huh. Wait, does that mean... What the legend says is true? The goddess of fate used ink to compose her stories on paper, and the goddess of creation used her power to bring those tales to life. No wonder the tavern is so important to the forest. Maybe the fading disorder occurs when the ink within the body dries up. That would explain why the beings here are forgetting their own stories. Oh. I'm not really sure I can really wrap my head around this conversation. But there's no need to get all worked up on our behalf, my lady. With the pipe installed, I'm sure the tavern will be up and running in no time. Oh, what do you mean, can't wrap your head around it? The fairy is recounting the story of how the goddesses gave us life. In fact, I've seen the goddess of creation with my own eyes. Really? Don't be ridiculous. There's no way you're old enough to have met her. We're the same age, and I think I would know, considering we went to tell our wishes to the goddess of fate together. So stop talking a load of paper mache. Oh, fine. It was my grandfather, all right? He was the one that saw her. He said that one day after he finished work, he saw the goddess of creation grant us life with his own eyes. In her hands, she held the very paper used to form our bodies. She whispered something into the pages, and then, suddenly, a paper frog was born, ready to leap into the world. Oh, it was spectacular. Ugh, cut the theatrics, will you? You weren't even there. Wait, 
So, that's it? Paimon thought creation magic would have a little bit more... pizzazz. Oh, so in your world, the creation of life is a much showier affair? Huh, I'm learning something new every day. Um, w well, that's not exactly what Paimon was trying to say. Magic doesn't have to be spectacular. That's enough out of you. All your boasting is confusing our kind fairy. Oh, no, it's all right. I actually think I understand the magic of this world a bit better now. Thank you. The honor was all ours, milady. We've got one final stop. Let's go. Piece of cake. Since we've taken care of most of the tasks, all we need to do now is reopen the tavern. But we still don't know how to use the magic of this world. We don't even know why the tavern closed in the first place. <sighs> oh, what about the method that one hamster mentioned? You should try it, Nilu. You mean the creation magic his grandfather saw outside the hut of blessings? Hmm, I wonder. How exactly did the goddess of creation give them life? Maybe you don't need to understand it. Just give it a try. Everyone here calls you the forest fairy. Maybe you have the magic powers already and you just don't know it. In other words, this forest is a stage. And all I need to do is step out into the spotlight? <laughs> Sounds just like a fairy tale. Well, we are surrounded by talking origami animals and magic potions, after all. Almost seems like anything's possible in this place. You're right, Paimon. We won't know anything unless we try. In that case, let's see. This is how you do it, right? I think I got the folds right. Oh, your origami skills are great! I once saw one of our prop people making something similar. It looked really cool, so I took some time during my break to learn the basics. It's not a bad way to stave off sleepiness either. Well, how do you feel? Sense any, uh, magical powers flowing through you? Mm. No. No? Hmm. What are we missing? Aren't you supposed to say some magic words? Magic words? But how am I supposed to know what the goddess said to bring them to life? It doesn't matter what she said. Focus on what you want to say. Oh, good point! You're the forest fairy, Nilu. What do you want to say to the new resident of your domain? Mm hmm... I bestow upon you the blessings of the forest and offer you a home in this land. Your name shall be Harisara. May you bloom in this world as beautifully as the flower I love. <sighs> My name is Harisara. It worked. It actually worked. Well, peel my shell and call me a nut. <laughs> I never imagined I'd witness such a miracle at my age. <laughs> it's just like what the story said about the goddess of creation. Shell? Miracle? Nice to meet you, Padisara. I'm Nilu, the fairy of this forest. From this day forward, this place is now your home. Hello, fairy Nilu. I hope you'll grow up happily in this forest. Grow up. <laughs> oh, you can leave the little one with old Armand for now. Oh, uh, this sure brings back memories. <laughs> it's been such a long time since we last held a welcome ceremony. Here, Padishara. Mm. Uh, come to Grandpa Armand. Well, now that Nilo has mastered the goddess's magic, we should be able to reopen the tavern, right? Hmm. Grandpa Almond, could you send a few people to check the underground space beneath the tavern? Oh, of course. Uh, may I ask why? 
The moment I used magic, I sensed something strange down there. I have a feeling it's connected to why the tavern had to close down. Uh, of course, we'll look into it right away. Make sure you listen to Grandpa Omen, Potty Sara. Don't go running off on your own. Potty Sara, listen. Running! Hey, come back here, you! Wait! Yep, that's Nilo's creation, all right! She's got so much energy. Anyway, how did you manage it, Nilu? Well, all I did was say my wishes for her out loud. Maybe the magic is in the words themselves, just like the book said. This place is seeming more like a fairy tale by the second. I mean, or some are called the Forest of Blessings, so it kind of makes sense. Well, anyway, Paimon thinks this magic suits you perfectly, Nilu. What about the space under the tavern? What had you so concerned? When I brought Padisara to life just now, I was able to sense the magic flowing through the forest, in the flowers and trees, and inside the creatures that live here. But for some reason, there's a hollowed out space beneath the tavern where I couldn't sense anything at all. We're back, my lady. That was fast. You were right. There was something under the tavern that I've never seen before. It looked transparent and gave off a clinking sound when I knocked on it. Transparent and clinking. Oh, I've got it! Uh, already? <laughs> You've got to use fairy tale logic, Paimon. Is it an ink bottle? That's right. An empty ink bottle, to be exact. Still remember the taste of the magic tonic you took a sip of, Paimon? Yeah, it was ink. Oh, Paimon gets it now! Traveler, Paimon, will you come gather some ingredients with me? I learned what we need to make the magic tonic back in the Hut of Blessings. Sure thing! What do we need to get? A setting sun that never sets, a dragon that cannot fly, and a moon that only shines at night. I... Where are we supposed to find crazy things like that? She means Sunsetias, Snapdragons, and Nilo... Nilote... Nilote Pala Lotuses. I can't say that. What? How did you get that so fast? Fairy tale logic, Paimon. Logic, huh? <laughs> Lucky guess, more like. I mean, a snapdragon is a flower, so it can't fly, but it's called a dragon. We have the lotus that literally doesn't open up its petals until nighttime. And then sunsetias are a fruit, and they, and they don't ever set because they just fall to the ground. Blessings. I was trying to see if I could work to it, but I don't think I can. Give me just a second. I'm gonna go fetch an ink bottle from the other room. Paimon doesn't get it. All the 
ingredients are super tasty, but somehow the final product turns into ink. Well, anyway, Paimon's not going anywhere near this stuff this time. Not even if you bribed her. Sorry to keep you waiting. Let's see. According to the book, first you do this, then this, and then... It's done! Wow! Magic sure makes everything super convenient! Oh look! It's Grandpa Almond. Let's give it to him. Yes, this is it. This is exactly the magic tonic we need. Grandpa Almond, could you take the concoction to the room underneath the tavern and place it next to the transparent bottle you found? I'll handle it. Of course! Oops. As you command, so it shall be done. <sighs> I still get nervous at times like this. It's just like when you step on stage and you can tell that every single person's gaze is fixed right on you. Oh, I'm nodding off again. Relax, Nilu. We're right here with you. <laughs> Thanks, you two. I can't tell you how great it is to have you by my side. Almost makes me feel like I've been blessed by the goddess of fate, too. Let's go. We shouldn't keep everyone waiting. <sighs> Forest. Please heed my words and accept my blessings. May your spring of wondrous magic never run dry. And may all who call you their home lead happy, fulfilling lives. <laughs> and I have to admit that when I did the uh, screenshot of the scene where she hugged Traveler, I uh, didn't actually paste it in some place so I could save it. So I'm gonna try to do it this time with this thing. when it suddenly opened up like that. Just like a pop-up book. <sighs> I, I remember now. I remember everything. It was me. I was the one who went to the top of Constellation Metropole and witnessed the goddess's prophecy. The hero who shall save this world will descend upon the cliff of prophecy. The hero. Supported by their companions, shall restore peace to this world. So the prophecy really did have all the answers, you just forgot the first half. That's why I was waiting near the cliff of prophecy. <laughs> wonderful, simply wonderful. There's still some hope left for old Armand after all. Is the cliff of prophecy that place with the huge mural? Because that is where we woke up, but we don't remember anything about how we got there. Also, we didn't get a change of clothes like Nilu. Are we definitely the heroes? If not you, then who else? 
Uh, you, you've already helped the fairy revitalize our forest. To us, that makes you heroes. Prophesized or not. Alright! By the way, we're going to keep adventuring, even if it's just to figure out how we can get back to our world. We can also help resolve any crises along the way. And we can help resolve your dragon problem along the way. Yep, we've beaten up plenty of dragons already, so what's one more? As expected, the words of the goddess of prophecy always come true. I'll come with you. It can't hurt to have a magical fairy tag along, right? <laughs> Thought you'd never ask. It would be our honor, my lady. Heroes and fairies, dragons and new adventures. <laughs> This is sounding more and more like a fairy tale by the second. Hmm. I would say your next stop should be Constellation Metropole. It's Simulanka's most prosperous city, just across the sea. Once you've arrived at the Astral Garden at the highest point in the city, uh, maybe you can try seeking divine counsel from the Goddess of Prophecy herself. Are you leaving, Fairy Nilu? I'm afraid so. There are still other people who need my help. I won't go far, though, and I'll come back to visit the minute I have time to spare. So be a good girl, Potty Sara, and help out Grandpa Almond whenever you can, all right? Mm-hmm. Got it. Potty Sara will wait here for you. <laughs> oh, that's a good girl, Potty Sara. Ah, I almost forgot. If Constellation Metropole is where you're heading, you'll need to take the Maritime Express. I'll head to the station first thing tomorrow morning and wake up that lazy station master for you. Uh, why don't you take a break for the rest of the day? You should savor the beautiful scenery of the forest before you go. Sounds great! Paimon definitely feels tired after being on the go for so long. There's a spot in the tavern with Paimon's name on it! Oh, sounds like someone's ready to order. Oh, well, if you're offering, Paimon will take a glass of Buell fruit tonic. Um, but hold the tonic. <laughs> and that is the end of that. Alright, so that's going to be the end of that quest segment for the Summertide Scales and Tales event, and I'll see you guys later!